Hussein and Hadija Moyo's 13-year-old son Yassin was shot and killed in late March during police enforcement of the coronavirus curfew. Moyo says he is relieved to hear that a policeman will face charges over his son's death. My neighbor who witnessed the incident saw him steady his gun and take aim on his target. He then let loose his shot. But by then, my eldest daughter had told her mother, let's get away from the balcony, it's not safe. My wife then beckoned the children to get away, but it was too late. Yassin had been hit by the bullet. A Kenyan police spokesman confirmed a policeman is to be charged over the teenager's death, but also decried it as an accident. We know he didn't do it intentionally, but still he has committed uh, a crime of manslaughter or whatever. He has killed an innocent life because of his professional negligence. If he would have done his work professionally the way he's trained, we would have not lost that boy. But Kenyan protesters this month decried what they call years of police impunity and a jump in incidents of police brutality during the curfew. We are tired of the police They marched in Madhari, the poor neighborhood where Yasin Moyo was killed. Kenya's Independent Police Oversight Authority says five other police are facing charges over other deaths, injuries and assaults that predate the COVID-19 curfew. The IPOA says it is investigating 15 deaths linked to police since March. We thought that IPOA would level charges against more rogue officers whom we as a community know have committed unlawful killings. But nothing has happened. And that is why we ask ourselves, what powers do these police officers have? Since its 2012 launch, Kenya's IPOA has overseen the conviction of just seven officers for unlawful deaths, despite dozens of killings linked to police. The Independent Police Oversight Authority did not have a spokesperson available to comment. Lenny Rovaga for VOA News, Nairobi.